the front of my camera. So this is the Ricoh 400 ring flash, um, and I use this as my fill light. This is my go-to fill light. This is amazing. When, you, when we fire this up, you'll see how cool this thing is. So you can, instead of having another light stand with another flash, another softbox for your fill light, you can use just this ring flash. And this, for me, gives it that painterly quality to it, which I love. But we'll get there. Let's start with our key first. That's the main, that's the main thing we want to do. So I've got a meter reading. I'm at F10, uh, 1 1 25th of a second at ISO 200. And let's take a test shot. All right, wait for that to pop in. Okay, so I'm shooting at a 100 millimeter, 100 millimeter lens. And what I want to try and show you, if I just simply move it, maybe a foot there, and if I take another shot again, just move that out of the way. And I want to emphasize that if you only have one light, it's very versatile. You can get away with just using one light to create really dramatic and interesting results. You don't always have to put a different light on just to get something even more dramatic, just by moving the light, just a foot. So all I've done is just moved it a foot, and then take the same again. And we can see, take a mental note, and then it's ever so slightly, it's ever so slightly more dramatic. And if you want it even more dramatic, you can do a number of three things. You can either move the light, you can take a step away, or you can just simply ask your model to turn towards you. So if I took another step this way, and then asked Jane to look towards me this way, and if we compare that with this one, all I did was take a step, a, a foot. And then this really does help if you are using the grid as well. So when you are using the grid, that's when you've got to really be pinch up and make sure you're on it um, with, uh, with the positioning. Because as I say, it was just the difference between there and there that made a huge difference. If I did the opposite and almost come underneath the light and took the same again, And we can see it fills in so much more. I'm going to just try and crank up the key light a little bit. Okay, cool. So that, so that is our basic headshot. That's a basic headshot with our key light. But what I'm going to try and do is make it just a little bit more interesting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this ring light on and just see what dramatic difference it makes. So this is going to fill in those shadows in the unlit side of the face. So if I turn it on here, now I can't meter this. Well, I can, but I don't like to have it on a tripod. I like to move around with it. And obviously, I can't meter with it because if I'm moving, it's gonna change all the time. So when it comes to my fill light, I do do it by eye. So I'm gonna start off at around, let's try 116, uh, let's try and go 1 8th power. And let's take the same again, sorry, sir. Okay, so I'm gonna crank that up because I'm not seeing a huge difference. But if I now go to quarter power, there it is. And just increase that again. I don't think it's firing properly, bear with. Just change the channel settings. filling in. So if I now take the same shot but I just turn it off just to show you. And compare that with that. So it's, it's a subtle difference and that's what your feel light is. It's very very subtle. If I go back and zoom in you can see that tiny little dot there. So that's what the fill light's doing there. That's what this ring flash is doing here. And it's just giving us that little bit of shadow information on the unlit side of the face. So you can imagine now when you're in Lightroom, you can now play with that shadow slider. 
in Lightroom, so you can get you can give it more sh you can give it more detail because you've given the pixels light. You've given you've helped it out basically. If you want to take it away, then that's absolutely fine. You can just play around with that shadow slider and make it darker, almost as if you didn't use it at all. But it's nice to have the option, isn't it? It's nice to always have the detail there if you want to, because sometimes if you pull it too much, it doesn't look real. It kind of looks like you have pulled the shadows. So this gives it more of that organic look, and I think it gives it that painterly quality to it. So that's my key, and that's my fill. But the next thing I want to do now is, to make it more dramatic, I want to bring Jane away from the background. Because if you want to make that background darker, then just simply move your set further away. So Jane, if I can ask you just to jump up and bring the chair a little bit closer towards me, uh, that should be good. Okay, before I add my backlight, I'm just going to take another test shot. And uh, what I might even do actually is I'm going to bring my key light even closer because inverse square law, that's going to make that background darker because I've got my key light even closer. Now because I have moved my key light, I'm going to need to do another meter reading because that will be brighter. I know that without taking it, that's going to be brighter. So I need to do another meter reading just to make sure I'm all good. So that's now F14, so just as I predict, it's going to be bright. So I'm going to bring the power down on that. Back to F9, cool. So at this point, I just want a darker background. I'm going to turn the Rico off again, so we're just back to our, to our key light. And there we go, if I zoom back out. Go from that to that and I've now got a darker background. I didn't touch anything, I didn't adjust anything, I just moved Jane and the light back away. There's no other sort of light, this isn't going off here. This is a, uh, that shouldn't be going off anyway. So I'm just bringing Jane closer to the walls for you guys, that's gonna make that darker. And the reason I wanna do that is I wanna light the background independently. So yes, I do actually want that background lit, but I want it lit independently because in the previous photo, it was lit fairly evenly, but I want it more focused. I want it channeled, so it's just a, a highlight behind Jane. So that's where this guy comes in. So I'm gonna bring this in, it's a Pika. But what I have got on the front of it, I have got a, a Magmod. So if you're unfamiliar with Magmod, it's magnetic modification. These are absolutely great. They hook onto not only Pikas, but they were originally designed for speed lights. And that's great, and I always use the the speed light adapter because this comes with a bare bulb and a speed light adapter. So I always use the speed light adapter so I can take advantage of Magmod. So with that grid, which makes it super portable as well, and with the Pika, I have a tiny modding light. It's just enough, even in this ambient light, for me to see where this is pointing. So if I have it kind of pointing down and then up, so it streaks across the background, hopefully we should get more of a dramatic result. So, just gonna meter that background light. Just gonna change that channel, so we're on the right channel. Okay, and then get a reading. Okay, so that's at 7.1. Now my settings are at F9, or F10 actually, but I'm actually okay with that, because I don't want it exactly the same as my key. The key with the, um, the backlight, in my opinion, is obviously don't go um, higher than what you're set to, but if it's, if it's underneath by, by a third of a stop, a full stop, that's okay, that's fine. As long as it's underneath, it's gonna be exposed, technically. It's not gonna be overexposed. But if it was the same as my key, it might be a bit too distracting. So I'm gonna purposely go a third or two stops under, ex under the correct exposure. But if we need to, we can tweak it. But at the moment, it's set to about 7.1. So let's try and take a test shot. Make sure that is firing. Yeah, that's firing. We'll take a test shot. Is it chin down? Okay, cool. Okay, now we've got, now there, this is really nice. So it's almost like an actual vignette effect. And I quite like that, actually. But let's see what it looks like if I go up just, I think it's just a couple more, just two thirds of a stop. Oh. Well, that's what it looks like, by the way, uh, when the key light doesn't fire, when it's a bit of a misfire. So you can see what the backlight is doing by itself. We saw what it looked like when we didn't have a backlight. 
So this is what we're doing. This is part of the additive process. And while we're on the subject of additive, let's switch my re ring light back on. And let's see what the ring flash is doing in con uh, conjunction with everything that we have so far. Okay, there we go. That looks pretty good. So we zoom in, we get that nice catch light you can see from that Rico. I've got a full screen actually. So we've got all our elements there. Just to make sure that you guys can see what this ring flash is doing. And the reason why I never use it as a key light is because as a key light, it's not as good in my opinion as when you're using something like this. So that's why I always like to use this in conjunction with a softbox or a key light. So just to prove a point, I want to show you what this ring flash is doing by itself. So I'm going to turn my key light off. I'm going to turn my backlight off. And all that's going to fire is the ring flash. And you can see just what this is doing by itself with this example here. Okay, not very pretty, is it? It doesn't look very nice, but it, it's okay because that's just my fill. It's not supposed to look great like that. It's just added in. So as I say, it's giving that wiggle room with the shadow slider in, um, in Lightroom. If I switch it back on, and I'm gonna turn the ring flash off so we can see just what the key light is doing by itself. Okay, so again, it's, there's nothing wrong with that, and this is the this is the point. There is nothing wrong with just having your one your one light as your key, but this is just a fill, and that's exactly why it's called a fill. It's just filling in. It's not doing any more. So if I switch that back on, and then this is where it's just personal preference: is that you dial the power up and down on the Rico where you like it. You might want more fill, you might want less fill. It's all to do with the ratio. So if I now take another shot. Now that for me, that's a good spot. I don't want to go any higher because I don't want it to look obvious that the feel like it's been used, but now I've got the wiggle room there if I need to. So the last thing I want to try and do is, I've got a flag here, so I'm going to bring the flag in and try and purposely flag off some of the, uh, some of the edge. So it's just kind of more of a subtle uh, shadow vignette going across. So I'm just focusing um, on Jane's face. So you can see we've got an, the unlit side of the face on, on the left side but we've got quite a lot being filled in on the right. So what I'm gonna try and do is just try and get rid of that so that we're just focusing on Jane's face. So I'm gonna bring this flag in. Now this is gonna be a game where we just kinda of need to tweak it. Because we, because uh, it's kind of hard to see where this is pointing because of all the ambient in this room. But let's actually turn this up. Okay, so we turn the modding up all the way. I mean, get a rough idea of where it's pointing and I'm gonna bring the, flag in here. Now I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to need to back up the key light a little bit, which is probably going to increase the brightness on the background, but I'm okay with that. Oops, don't want to go into the crowd there. Sorry? Well, th then because of the uh, 100mm macro, I don't want to cramp it all in here. Okay, so let's give that a go. But before we do, I'm going to need to re-meter again. Just to make sure, because we made a couple of adjustments. Plus, having the flag covering roughly half of the softbox, that's obviously cutting out some of that light. So I'm just going to do another meter in just to check. Okay, so that's now F4, so I've lost a lot of light doing this, so I'm going to really crank that up. F7-1, so a little bit more. F9, that's cool. Alright, let's see how we get on. Okay, Jane, looking up towards here for me. That's it, bring your shoulder this way for me, so um, swing, it, swing this way. That's it, but you're kind of looking up towards here, that's it. Okay, cool. Just gonna move, feather this out a little bit. I think it was hitting too much. 
And with the flag, the closer the flag is to your... Someone's on channel one. The closer your flag is to your model, the more dramatic it's going to be. The closer the flag is to the light source, the softer it's going to be. So if you want it more hard, if you want it more of a, more of a hard line, then you need to bring that flag closer to your model. If you've pretty much got it like this close and it still is not a fine line or as much as you want, you're going to need to change the modifier out to maybe something like a snoot. I mean, maybe we can try it in a second. But if we bring that a little bit closer. Oops. Yeah. Okay, looking towards me this way, Jen. That's it. Is that chin down? Okay, so I need to bring that just a little bit in. Okay, cool. And then lean forward in the touch. I said, looking up here. That's it. Lean forward in the touch more. This way. That's it. Okay. So we can see we've kind of vignetted a little bit on the corner there using the flag compared to when it was open here. So when we were, yeah, when we were here versus here, we've got that vignette using the flag. Now what we're going to try and do for the last setup is if we swap out this modifier and we use a snoot instead, so we'll create something even more dramatic. 